Because ever since we kind of locked this in yesterday, my heart has been pounding, my palms are sweaty. Quite frankly, I have PTSD from the incident, which we don't need to go too far deep into from last month, where the, you know, it was just sort of like the rug was pulled. But it was like, it was so, it was so traumatic because every single show since, the questions have been, you know, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? Are you on the outs? Is she too big time? Are you not important anymore? Is this it? Is this the end? Sure, you were there from essentially pre, I mean, the Olympics, basically, like before the first gold medal. And now, like, are you just, you know, roadkill on the side of the road? And so, like, I don't even know what's waiting for me on that side. I have no idea. I'm nervous because I feel like it's just going to be a blank screen and it's just going to be egg on my face once again. And so let's just go to the screen if we can. And uh, yeah, see, that's what I thought. Uh, you see, that's what, that's exactly what I thought. I knew it. I knew it. If you could only feel my heart, it's by my ankles right now. It's been a very tra- oh, you I laugh. You're such a drama queen. You laugh, Kayla, but it's it's been so, so tough. It's been so tough. Hi, Ariel. Hello. Everyone's like, oh wow, she couldn't do interviews that day. Meanwhile, she's doing 95 interviews. Oh, she's doing this. She's doing that. It's not oh, true. I mean, it's just been. Oh my gosh. Man, I went from being don't first. Don't make me say. Don't make me say fake news. Don't uh, make me. Say- <laughs> It's first to last. Oh, By the way, nice Stanley. I like a good Stanley. My daughter loves a good Stanley. Well done. God is love. It's a fake one. Okay, but, yeah. fair enough. All right. I guess the uh, the UFC paycheck isn't as good as I thought it was. No, I have another one. Oh, there it is. It's Stanley. <laughs> I got two Stanleys. Respect. Uh, well, it's so good to see you for the first time. I mean, we the journey Hi. started. At, you were just like selling books. That's all you were doing. You weren't sure who I was. And uh, pre-PFL, if you recall, that's the first time I spoke oh, yeah. to you. You know? Yes. Yes. Post-Olympics, you mean. When, well, after I won my second I was medal, there. Right? I was there at the first uh, gold medal. You just didn't know me. I was really, I was in the back of the room. But I've really been on this journey. We never really For talked the first about it. Gold medal, you were there. Yeah, I was in the back. I was in the back. I was just a young. Were you really? I was just a young cub. In London. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in the back, all the way in the back of the press room. So full of shit. <laughs> yeah. See. Uh, how are you? Um, what a journey. Yeah, yeah. Let's just clear the air for a second okay. here. Who's <sighs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so good to see you. By the way, you you look svelte, but still packing heat. Still packing heat, (laughs) baby. Um, I know everyone's talking shit about me online. She's on steroids. How she gonna make way? Is that Chris Jericho? I was like, that's actually pretty funny. (laughs) <laughs> I'm talking about your face. Your your face looks very slim compared to to usual. Are you uh, like a month before a fight? Could I ask how much you weigh as opposed to when you're fighting at fifty five, fifty, forty five? Uh, I'm about 150 pounds. Okay, so that's tremendous. You're obviously not at 150 pounds when you're fighting at 150 pounds. I'm not. How is life though? Because this was my concern. Yeah, cool. Sign on it's the dotted line. Coffee right at the end of my favorite time of the day. Oh, perfect. Lunch time. <laughs> my concern was that your life would be hell on on route to one thirty five. I know we're not quite in the thick of it right now, but how is life as a bantamweight? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sitting in a sauna right. at one thirty eight right now. So yeah, like life is still good. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's chosen suffering. It's chosen suffering. You know, like this is. Um. We all make sacrifices. We all have to pay now or pay later, but eventually we all pay. And this is something that I'm willing to sacrifice for. This is something I signed on the dotted line for. So it's my responsibility. It's my duty. And um, does it suck sometimes when like it's Friday night and my kid, I order pizza for my kids? Like, yeah, of course. I'm like, you know, just one slice. Yeah. You know, you have like those voices in your head. <laughs> Um, but overall I feel really good. My body feels good. My mind is clear. My heart is wide open and ready for, you know, the future and all of the excitement that's building. And, um, I'm fueled, I'm hydrated. Life is good. I'm a killer. So if we can, uh, I'd love to kind of start, even though we've already started in, um, (laughs) November of last year. When you walked okay. out of the cage in D.C., the PFL event, Black Friday, did you know mm-hmm. that that would be your last PFL fight? No. Did you no. want it to be? I 
<clears throat> no, I mean, I had no idea what I wanted, really. Like, I know, I knew that I wanted to keep fighting. I knew that um, I wanted to face big competition. And I knew that um, I needed to kind of get a lay of the land and see what was going to happen and how things were going to flesh out. Um, yeah, and it definitely did not <laughs> did not go how I envisioned it going. <laughs> can you can you elaborate on that? Um, I don't want to dwell too much on the past simply because that's where it is. It's in the past. It doesn't, it's not for me to, you know, but I, I just, I, <sighs> this is a business. It's not, you know, it's the fight business. It's not the fight friends. And, um, yeah, it just didn't, it didn't go exactly, it didn't go how I thought it was going to go. Um, Michael Chandler talks a lot about, you know, the sort of courtship from the UFC and his phone. I love him, by the way. Oh, he's the man. Yes. I'm a huge fan. Uh, he a... came up to me at the fights on 299 and he like introduced, I was like, hi. he was like, hi, I'm Mike. And I was like, hi, I'm Kayla. And he's like, I know who you are. And he was like, I'm really excited for your debut. Welcome. You're going to love it here. You know, like he just was very welcoming and like gracious. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, thank you. Yeah. So anyways, what no, were you going to say? He, he's a mensch. He's uh, and he's a great representative for the brand. And, and he can probably speak best on how life changes when you go from one organization to the UFC. And that's not knocking mm -hmm. anyone, but it's just a different playing field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he has talked about like his conversations with Hunter and Dana saying like, yeah. I'm not here for a long time I'm here for a good. And I'm just wondering about your conversations as you guys were trying to make this, like, what was that like trying to get this done? Because obviously there's the 135 thing, which you've never done before. <laughs> and you had a great situation with PFL and I think they treated you quite nicely. So how did it go in terms of yeah. inking it? I mean, it went fine. You know, that's, um, that's why I pay your best friend, the big bucks. Um, Would, you know, he Daniel is... Cormier, who are we talking about? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That was good. Um, I try not to get too involved in that side of it just because it's it's hard to not become emotional about your own worth and your own, like, how you feel about – it's hard not to let emotions get involved for me personally. That's So I try not to get super involved in the ne negotiation process. You know, I'll come. I'll show up. I'll – you know, wow them with my wit and humor and grace. But um, yeah, the the negotiation part of it. I mean, I just make it very clear. Look, like I, I come over to be the best. I want to win a, a title. I want to smash everybody. And I want to get paid well to do it. And I know I deserve that. And that's it. Was there any pitch that was made in terms of fighting at 45, not 35? Um, I don't think so. I don't think that that was even like a on the table kind of thing, which in all fairness, like they didn't. Yeah. Like they were like, no, that's not, that's not an option. Okay. And was there any trepidation on your part because of that? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. How hard of a decision was this? <laughs> you think I'm crazy? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was definitely, you know, Ariel, it's like, It was a really hard time in my life. It was a really hard decision for me to make. Um, and I was really scared. I was really scared about um, all of it, you know, like the weight cut and the the unknown, right? Like w whether I like it or not, this is a totally new beast to me. Yes, it's MMA, but this is like at the PFL, like I'm – I started with them. I was with them before they were the PFL. Like I grew with them. I know everybody. Everybody knows me. Like I know, I know that animal, you know, like I've been, been there. So it's comfortable. It's familiar. It's fighting is never safe, but it's as probably as safe as it can get, you know? 
Um, and this is not that, you know, this is, this is not that. And I had to kind of dig down. I had to get really still and I had to shut off all the noise, you know, because there were a lot of people who felt very strongly about one way and a lot of people who felt very strongly about the other way. So I kind of had to get real quiet and sit with myself and, you know, pray about it, journal about it, meditate, like literally write down a pros and cons list, like picture it this way, picture it that way. Um, and just get really still and try and listen to, listen to my heart and listen to God. And, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm excited. I feel like I'm ready for a new challenge. I'm ready for a new chapter. Um, I don't have a ton of years left fighting. I think that uh, I'm a two-time Olympic champion. I'm a two-time PFL champion. I have plenty of money in the bank. Um, when I started MMA, I wanted to be UFC champion. And um, that's not a knock on the PFL. It didn't even exist then. But like when I started MMA, the goal was to be UFC champion. And Along the way, the goal might have changed a little bit, and I might have felt like it wasn't as necessary. But, yeah, I want to be UFC champion. And um, do you know what really was the deciding factor for me? And this is so crazy for someone like me to, like, openly admit this to the world. But, like, I realized... That like, say the worst happens. Say I go out and I fucking get knocked out in 10 seconds and I never become UFC champion. And that's my last fight ever. Like whatever, I tear my Achilles and I can't recover, whatever. Something crazy happens. Like, will I be okay? And the answer is yes, I will. Like. I'll be okay. Do I do I really want to win a UFC title? Fuck yes. Like I am I am in it and I'm eating, sleeping, living, breathing and so are my children and so are my all of my friends and my family. Like everyone is like all in on this with me. And like it'll be okay. It's going to be fun. I'm enjoying the ride. Would that mean more than winning Olympic gold? Becoming UFC champion? I'll tell you after I do it. Okay. Do you, I'll, I'll come As you dream about it, as you want it, because the only reason I ask that question is because when you're going for Olympic gold, I, I, obviously there's so many people involved in that process, but now as a mother and the mm -hmm. sacrifice that you're making for your body to get down to 135, it's like mm -hmm. almost like an even greater challenge, I feel like, because it's not just <laughs> you showing up at you know, 150, whatever, 160, and you can just do your thing. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering, mm -hmm. and you know, this is probably your last sporting achievement left, right? It's not like you're going to go do something else yeah. after this. So I'm just wondering if the feelings are different as, as you dream about and, and strive um, for. It. I think the feelings are different in the sense that like, I'm actually living in the moment and enjoying the process versus like trying to get there as fast as possible. I listened to Dustin's interview the other day and like being mindful, being present, being grateful, being aware of like, dude, what a beautiful life I live. And like, what an amazing journey it's been. When I was 16 training for the Olympics, like I was not, <laughs> I was not grateful for, any, for right. anything. Right. I was miserable. Um, and yeah, it's just like my, my mindset, where I come from, like, I don't fight out of a place of fear anymore or like unworthiness or lack. I fight out of, out of a place of joy and fulfillment. And like, mm, this is, I feel like part of my purpose in life. Like this is my purpose and my passion. Um, so it's different. It's hard to compare to like, I'm, I was a different person when I was an Olympic athlete and the Olympics are such a different, it's a different world. Like 
It is a different world, Ariel. I mean, yeah. Number one, it's every four years. Right. And no one had ever won a gold medal from our country. And like everything I overcame to get there. I don't know that anything will ever top that. But also just the the culture is very different, you know? Like I just did my first UFC Q&A last mm. week. Um, what did you make of that experience? Eye-opening. In what way? I had a lot of fun. Um, well, like, for instance, because it was a fan Q&A, so yeah. at one um, at one point there was a fan who came up and spoke to Armin. Yeah. And Russian, and Armin was getting booed the whole time, and, like, you know, we have talked about it, and we're fine, but, like, the guy asked him basically how many times would... He asked him a really inappropriate question about me mm -hmm. and Armin answered it. And I didn't, I mean, I'm up, I look like an idiot. I'm up on, up on the stage, like laughing and, you know, Megan Olivia says, would you care to translate it? And Armin's like, no, stupid question, move on. And then the next day I'm tagged in all these Russian outlets with the translation of what he asked. And, um, you know, it's disheartening. I, I think like it's, disrespectful like i'm a two-time olympic champion a world champion i'm a mother i'm a advocate for survivors of sexual abuse i wrote a book i have a foundation um so like in that sense it was disrespectful that someone would even ask that question but more than that i think like you would never hear a, a female get asked like how many times would you have sex with Alex Pereira, you know, like, that's just like, we don't, we don't sexualize men like that. So it was disheartening. And, um, at first I was super embarrassed and like shocked by it, but then I was just was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to keep being me and I'm going to say something about it when the time is right, because I feel like that's wrong. And, um, I want to help change the landscape of the sport, not just for me, but for future female fighters. And um, it was on International Women's Day to boot, mm. you know, like, like, what are we talking? Like, uh, have you yeah, talked to him? Fresh. Have you talked to him about it? The no, guy who to asked? Armin. To Armin. Yeah, Armin and I spoke about it. Have you yeah. cleared the air? Because he's a teammate, right? Armin and I, are, yeah, he's a teammate. Yeah. yeah, that was obviously awkward. Yeah. Um, no, we spoke about it. We're good. Okay. There's no, I have no issues with Armin. It's more just like, I guess this is my point is like, that is wild that that like even happened. <laughs> like, uh, the whole Q and A was bizarre. Uh, I, I won't lie and say that I watched the whole thing, but I did see that clip and I saw other clips where people were coming up and telling Armin that he's going to get smoked by Charles Oliveira. It's right? like, like that it, was very disrespectful yeah, to him. It's crazy. As well. It's crazy. Um, I was like, not, it's just a different beast. Like, and I think too, I'm realizing like, it's a, like, it's a different beast. Yeah. Like this is the big show. This is the big show and people, fans love you or hate you, but you know, you're going to get a lot more eyes in this space. When's the last time you weighed 136? Mm, probably 18. Wow. How close have you gotten to 136 in this process? Very close. Okay. Um, you feel comfortable with it? You, do you think that this, are you dreading it? Are you nervous about it? Are you, no. I'm embracing it. Uh, what I was told was part of the appeal from their camp was, yeah, you're going to deplete yourself on, on route to bantamweight and this plays into our favor. Do you understand that line of thinking? Yeah, I can see where that would be attractive and alluring for this fight um was anyone else to i love the matchup and i love the stage i love the card it's just like great it's like what a way to showcase yeah. you former champ decorated yeah. was this yeah. the only one discussed meaning for a debut yeah. it was holly yeah and did you like it right away yeah i mean i would have said yes to anybody but um this was the fight i think that they you know ollie said well if she says no or something but we didn't have to go that far. She said yes. So, have you been told that if you win this fight, you get a title shot? 
Um, I haven't been promised anything. There's no, no. Would you like that to be the case? I'm going to make it the case. Are you comfortable, like, you become number one contender, and then you become champion, and then you defend the title, and now we're not just talking about one fight at 135, it's multiple fights. Mm -hmm. Does that worry you? No. Okay. I'm a professional. And, like, my life is not... I think that people have like this misconception because I fought at 155 pounds for so long that maybe I walk around at like 180 pounds or something. But like I walk around like the max I get was 165, you know, so I'm not I just didn't cut weight like I don't I don't love it. I don't agree with it. I don't think it sends the right message to kids. And I think it's probably pretty unhealthy and not safe. But like. I'm doing it the right way. I have a, you know, Eric Pena is working with me. My chef Dara, like, is also a nutritionist working with me. Like, we're super dialed in. We have a group text. I check in every day. Like, they're, you know, it's, I'm a well-oiled machine at this point, And mm -hmm. I feel really good. Um, training is going great. Like, I've, I've, feel like I'm hitting my stride. I'm about to hit my peak right at the perfect, like it's all coming together. In, in the build up to all of this before it was officially announced, but there were some like rumblings and whatnot. Uh, your old friend, Chris Cyborg was saying, or uh, as I like to put it, the, the moderator of her social media account, um, was saying that you were ducking, turning down a fight against her in Riyadh. Could you Tell us your side of the story here. I mean, yeah, it's just not true. I didn't have any fights left on my contract. So, um, you know, there were no, there was nothing to duck because I wasn't under contract anymore. Um, I was open to being under contract again, but ultimately that, that didn't play out. So I wouldn't, I told you I fight Chris Cy I'll fight Chris Cyborg after UFC 300 in the parking lot since she's probably going to be in Holly's corner. So like we can just settle that right there if that's what she wants to do. Does this drive like she's a professional? She's a professional. Right, right. I, do you sometimes want to bang your head against the wall just because uh, I do remember you signing an offer sheet to fight her in Hawaii in Bellator? So you chased that, then PFL matched it, and now at the end of your contract, yes, the stars align nicely that she's now supposedly a PFL fighter and now yeah. trying to put out the, the sort of narrative that you're ducking her when it's the UF freaking C it's the UFC. It's not like you went to go to LFA or, <laughs> you know, one or Ryzen. Right. It's UFC right. 300 against Holly Holm. Like, what are we talking about? Here? Right. right. Um, I mean, yeah, of course it's like, it's an, it's annoying, but I don't, I mean, I, I kind of stopped chasing that, that golden goose a long time ago. Like, I don't think that, I don't believe that she would ever fight me. And I don't believe that my legacy depends on her. Um, and I know that people are going to feel one way or another, and it's not my job to, to tell them how to feel. Like, if you think I ran away from Chris Cyborg, that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. Um, I don't care. Could I ask, and, and obviously I understand there's a relationship here, so answer it whichever way you want. Uh, how did things end with PFL? Because I do have to mention that Don Davis was on the show and said that you had one fight left and he was hopeful that you would fight. So is there anything you could tell us about how things ended with him? Um, not at this time. Uh, I am hopeful that things will and amicably, um, yeah. Okay. Um, failed to mention before, Chris is training Holly, or training with her, I should say. I know. Is this just like one big trip? Everybody knows. Yes. Did, did, you, did you just laugh at this? Do you, well, how do you react to this? I just don't this? get it, yes. I don't know. I'm like, is that why you two get along? Because she's high drama too. You love the drama. You like no, to just like. No, actually, I I would say I would say I I, th I think we're not in a great place because I've pushed back. Really? If anything, Kayla, dare I say I think I've had your back 
uh, I mean, I've, I've taken some bullets for you. If I mean, I've put my, my reputation, you. my job, everything on the line. Have I not? You are, I'm fighting battles. You are the- while I'm fighting you, battles no, for you, you're canceling on me. You're canceling on my show. No. Okay, first of all, for the fans and the listeners' sake, I had to cancel because my lawyers requested that I not do media due to some pending Thank stuff. you for saying that because they thought we were on the outs or they thought that people were coming no, between us. I would never be on the outs with Ariel. Thank you, you couldn't. You couldn't. I mean, we're still going to have the AH and KH Yes, podcast. can't wait. I'm waiting for yeah, it. I'm, I'm just going to, yeah, it's going to be great someday. What would we even talk about? Because I don't watch fighting. So. Oh, life, <laughs> uh, parenthood, you know. Parenthood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We could get deep. I mean, like, what What about that Dustin conversation, right? I mean. Uh, Ariel. What a guy. Uh, what a guy. What? What a guy. Like, this is why I look up to him so much and why he's, yeah. And I think, yeah, he's just, he, if you're going to have a role model in this sport, young men and women, you know, look no further than Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Like, he, he did it the hard way and he did it the right way. And he just, like, even the growth that you see, in him from last fight, like even him just opening up and being like, not being afraid to talk about being vulnerable and like being scared and being in a dark place. Like, dude, that's so powerful. There are so many men right now who are struggling with the same exact thing and are afraid to speak out because men have like, you're supposed to be strong or you're supposed to be stoic or you're, you're not supposed to show feelings. And like just by him having that one conversation with you, the ripple effect mm. that it's going to have on young men and, and like and old men, like men everywhere, I think is so powerful. And yeah, no, I'm a fan of Dustin for life. Like I think true strength lies in our vulnerability. And um, he impresses me every day and he he just shines, man. Like, my God. It was so funny. Like, I've never met Robbie Lawler in my life. And we're, you know, sitting next to each other. I was surrounded by Kill Cliff people. I think they did that on purpose. Uh. Um, and we're sitting next to each other at the fight. And, you know, everyone loves Dustin. Like, who who doesn't love Dustin? And, like, the fucking, in the second or third round, second round, like, when, I don't even know how many gillies he jumped. But, <laughs> like, when he jumped the, like, third or fourth one, like, Robbie and I are like grabbing each other, like, no, wizard. <laughs> like, we're like, we're like bonded now forever in my mind. Probably not yeah. his, but in my mind, I was like, it's so funny too, because he always talks about it in practice. Like, he's like, Kayla, you miss 100% of the gillies you don't jump. And I'm like, I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. I don't have the kind of like confidence that you have. Like, <laughs> love him. Uh, me too. But seriously, I, I am, I'm a Dustin Poirier fan for life. And I just, yeah, like his awareness, his strength, his like willingness to open up and be vulnerable is something that the world could use a lot more of, you know, we have enough clowns. We could use more like real men like that. How do you win April 13th? What are you envisioning? Oh. Hmm. I mean, I think uh, realistically we're gonna get a get a nice takedown, and then people are gonna see oh boy. what Kayla can do with some fucking elbows, yes. some real ground. Oh gosh, mm-hmm. that is something. Have you mm-hmm. only uh, Invicta? Have you been allowed to use elbows? Right? Oh my, mm-hmm. this is fun. I'm excited. By the way, any meaningful conversations with Dana White? It's good to see him give you love, props, the way he's building you up, but any uh, any good chats with him? I mean, I just said hi um, at UFC 299. He was leaving. I was leaving. I said, I'm Kayla. He said, I know who you are. Welcome. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I don't know. You know, you don't want to yeah, assume yeah. that people know who you are. Like, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. Next time you see him, just tell him, like, I really like Ariel, and he's not that bad a guy. You know, whatever. That I might... should probably get a little more. Like, okay, whatever. 
I have a couple dubs under my belt before I. No pressure. No pressure. Um, well, I mean, I have your back, but no, like, no, no, let no. me. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Let me get a get little your more. Feet wet. All right, fair enough. Not even on the main card, so no, like we got. Right. You should probably ask Bo. Bo Nickel. Yes, everyone's so <laughs> mad about that. Golly, everyone. I know. I saw that. Everyone is very heated about that. What's up with that? It's so dumb. It's so dumb. You get you get paid the same. There's no difference. In fact, you're probably seen by more people if you're not on the pay per view. Then you know if you're on the ESPN. No, prelim. I yes. bet a lot of people buy the pay per view. ESPN prelims are available in everyone's home. It's going to be on. That's ES- true. You know no, that's I mean? true. For you're free. not wrong. It's dumb. Yeah. People get too crazy. Maybe about they this. just want the younger generation to buy the pay per view, and they think Bo will get them to do that. No, yeah, they're trying to push them. I don't. I mean, the whole card is great. You can't really, you know. Yeah. What is there to complain about? Cody Garbrandt's the opening fight. For goodness sakes, you I know, know, two former I, champions. So I, I can't really buy it there. I know. Well, what a life. What a life. I'm delighted. I feel like I can exhale now. Uh, this long, you know, month long nightmare is over. We're back. You are so dramatic. You act like we weren't even talking. No, listen, it was I so tough. Like I had to go through everyone think mediators, that I'm like lawyers, so agents. Senior. It was good. You know, I'll, we've yeah. been talking this whole time, everyone. <laughs> Full of shit. <laughs> uh, congratulations. So happy Thank for you. you. Well done. And uh, perhaps I'll see you out there. In uh, in Las perhaps? Vegas, yeah. Perhaps I'll yeah. see you out there. Going out there? We'll see. You know, we'll see. I would love that. I wouldn't miss it for the world. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, Kayla, right. congrats. Well done. Good luck this past uh, this upcoming month as you prepare for the debut, the weight cut, everything that goes into it. Can't wait for it. Well done, and appreciate you coming on as always. Always. Thank Much you. Much love, Eric. Much All love, right, Kayla Harrison, the great one. Uh, back to back. Olympic gold medals. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.